Now you can see that with the increased tension, the curves are a little bit more slack, I guess, and the color has changed and we are now filling in underneath the graph. Hi guys and welcome back. I hope you're having a great day and sorry for not uploading any videos lately. We've been busy with a home move that's been taking a very long time. So I do apologize about that, but we've got a brand new video ready for you today. We're going to be showing you how to add graphs to your Flask apps. If you've got some data that you want to display in your website and you're using Flask, I'm going to show you how to do that using Chart.js, which is a JavaScript charting library. The first thing to do here, we've got a brand new project with nothing in it. We're going to install Flask with pip install Flask. Make sure to create your virtual environment before you do that. Once that's done, we're ready to sort of run this when we've got some code going. So I'm going to close that for now. I've got a simple Flask app in here. We've got app.py and a templates folder with a graph.html file in there, which is empty. Whenever I create an HTML file, I like to set it up using the Emmet abbreviation from VS Code, which does this, and then we can just save it and, and give this a title. I'm going to call it sample chart, and we're going to populate the body of this template in a moment. But first, let's focus on app.py. I'm going to show you how to draw a sample chart using Chart.js and some sample data. So the first thing to do is import Flask and render template. Once we've done that, we can create our Flask app. And then we can create our route. I'm going to call this home. And in here, we're just going to get our sample data and we're going to prepare it for charting. We're going to draw a line chart in a moment. And then we're going to render the template. So this is my sample data. I've got a list of tuples and each tuple has two elements, the date and a number. Let's say this is the number of users in your application or something like that. Then what we want to do to simplify the charting process is we want to separate this data into labels and values. The labels are going to go on the X axis of our chart and the values are going to be plotted as a line. So in order to get the label, we just do row zero for row in data. And similarly, to get the data itself or the values, we do row one. With that done, we can return the render template, pass in the template name, which is graph.html, and then we're going to pass the labels and the values. So there we have it. Now, you can see the red underline there is just the new line being missing. And this is a new line being missing at the end as well. So we're all good to go in terms of the Flask app. Naturally, in your real life projects, this data here may be coming from the database. But the technique that I'm showing you here of separating labels and values in your Python code means that when you go to charting this data using Chart.js, it's going to be really easy. Let me show you how that would be done. Let's go to graph.html. And the first thing we want to do is we want to load the chart.js library. So we're going to do that just like that. I'm going to close the file explorer there so you can see a bit better. Using a script tag and the src attribute, we're loading chart.js from its CDN, its content delivery network. That means that it's going to load very quickly no matter where your users are, and they can download it from the internet. You don't have to host this file yourself on your server. When that's done, we have to first of all create a canvas element. The canvas element is an HTML5 element that allows drawing, and it is what Chart.js uses to produce the graphs. So here we'll give it an ID. I'm going to call it line chart. Then we can give it a width. I'm going to give it 900 and a height, which I'm going to give it 400. And then we can close up the canvas there. The width and height can be used by Chart.js if you tell it to. By default, it won't use it and it'll make the graphs as large as possible. I'm going to show you how to make it use that as well. Once you've got the canvas somewhere in the body underneath the canvas definition, you want to create another script tag. And in here, we're going to write our JavaScript that uses chart.js to populate this canvas with a line chart. 
The first thing to do is to give Chart.js the 2D context of this canvas or where it can draw within the canvas. So we'll do var ctx. This is how we create a variable in JavaScript. And that's going to be document get element by ID, which we're going to find this canvas element. So we're going to give it line chart. And then in there, we're going to do dot get context. This is part of the canvas API. And we're going to give it 2D. Then we have to create the line chart. So I'm going to create another variable for line chart. And this is going to be a new chart. This comes from chart.js. And we pass it in the context. And then we're going to pass in a JavaScript object of properties that it's going to use. The first one is the type, which is going to be line. You can check the chart.js documentation for other types of chart. There's loads of them. And then we're going to pass in the data. The data is a set of labels where we're going to pass in our labels that are coming in from our Python app, these ones here, and then of data points, as well as some other information. In order to pass in a list of strings from the Python side of things to this template, and then to embed it here in this JavaScript code, we can't just do this as we would normally. Normally, we would just put that and that would include it in our HTML. But this is not actually going to be a list of strings, it is going to be a string representing the list of strings. So we want to do labels, and then safe with the pipe in the middle, this is going to actually uh, return using Jinja to the HTML safe representation of our list of strings, instead of trying to convert it into a string first. So you should only do this for data that you trust to include in your template, i.e. data that you yourself are providing and not data that's coming from your users. Notice that I'm getting a lot of red underlines in here. That's because VS Code is saying, what are you doing? This is not valid JavaScript. It knows that we're currently in a JavaScript element. But we don't care about that. This is Jinja 2, which is going to get populated before the JavaScript runs. And so we don't care about these red underlines. They are a bit annoying but that's what we've got to work with. Now that we've got the labels or the x axis ticks, we can also include data sets. And we can put multiple data sets here in a list, but we're only going to include one, the label is going to be data points, you can put whatever you want, this will show up in the legend. And then the data is going to be the values that we're passing in, once again, made safe so that they can be included in the JavaScript. You can pass in a few other options like fill, you can also use a border color, this is a string representing the CSS color that is to be applied to the line in the graph, I'm going to use 75192192. And you can use line tension, I'm going to put 0 0.1. This is how tight the corners are going to be when you come across a join in two straight stretches of line, I'll show you how this changes in a moment. Finally, after the data down here, we also have options. And here we can put an option which is responsive is false. If you say responsive is false, that is going to tell chart.js to use the width and height of your canvas as the place to draw. If you say responsive is true, or you just delete it, then this graph will be as big as possible within the screen or the window of your browser. Make sure to put your semicolon there, not strictly necessary, but nonetheless, it's what I like to do with my JavaScript. So now we've got our chart drawn. We can save that, go to our terminal and run flask run. So then we've got our data points, we've got our line, we've got the data points legend there, and we've got our line drawn in the color that we chose. You can see the labels down here are the ones we set up. And the y axis is automatically set to start just under the lowest value in our graph and finish just over the highest value. So that's why we're getting this graph there. If we set responsive to true, or we just delete it, then we can restart our application. And you'll see the graph is much larger as large as the window itself. This just means that the graph will use the HTML proportions rather than the inline width and height of the canvas element. Let's change fill to true and change this border color slightly. We'll also change the line tension to 0.5. Now you can see that with the increased tension, the curves are a little bit more slack, I guess, and the color has changed and we're now filling in underneath the graph. 
This is especially useful when you've got multiple different data sets being drawn in one set of axes. All right, that's everything for this video. I just wanted to show you that you can do this with Flask and it's really easy with a library such as Chart.js. You can check out their documentation at chartjs.org and there's loads of different graphs as well as a million examples on how you can use them. By separating labels and values in the Python side of your code, you're going to make it super easy to simply include these into your Jinja2 templates and embed the values using the safe filter that we've seen. So that's everything for this video. Thank you guys for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed it. Remember to click like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.